Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Okay, McCall's is here with their new winter holiday collection. This is, uh, I think the third of the big four. Um, I think we still have Butterick to go. And who else is under Simplicity? Um, so I am eager to see what we've got here because reading your comments, <laughs> the winter holiday collections of the, of Simplicity and um, Vogue has been a little hit or miss. So hopefully this is something we all love. All right, this first pattern is a cape with a belt. Doesn't she look super chic? Um, why did it just open up this? Let's go to the full page. Here we go. Um, okay, so it's got a collar that's like a, like a shawl collar, unlined, wrap, belted, cape, has shawl collar or self-lined hood, all edges unfinished and edge stitched. All edges. So all of these are raw and just sewn together on the edge. That's kind of cool. There's kind of the general shape of it. I want to know, is there a belt loop? Is there a hole there? How is that happening? The illustration doesn't really show it very well. Is it just going up under the arm? No, here's a good picture of it. Yeah, there's like a buttonhole there. So it actually hugs your, it's closer to your skin on the back. It goes inside the coat. So yeah, here's the back. And I think, oh, and there's the big hood too. That's a very large hood. So is this the hooded version too? Oh, wow. Okay. I really don't hate it. Um, I think the last time I remember us talking about a cape, I was like, it was just over the arms like this. And I was like, how am I supposed to drive like that? But this one does look very roomy. I bet it takes a ton of fabric. Yeah, there's your belt loop things. This one, though, they didn't draw it on there. Or this one. So what's the difference? Hmm. Maybe that's just an error. I'm not sure. Um, let's see about the fabric. Wool blends, wool flannels, melt in wool or fleece. And yeah, almost three, well, two and a half, right around two and a half yards for all of them. But is that the hooded version? No, that's not even the hooded version. The hooded version is C. And oh yeah, C takes somewhere between three and a quarter and three and a half. So yeah, that's pretty expensive. And wool isn't, you know, the cheapest of all the fabrics. So I don't know, that definitely will have to play into... Uh, my decision on whether to grab this pattern or not, but it certainly looks cute and they styled it well, so I don't hate it. All right, next up we've got 8013 Mrs. Outerwear Detachable Fur Collar and Belt. So this is a long coat. Looks like there's some buttons up here, the collar that they spoke about. Here is a shorter, much more business-like um, version. That's interesting that you could have this look as well as this look in one pattern. That's fun. That's pretty. Here she is again. It does look like it's lined. Big vent in the back. All right, loose fitting, lined coat, has collar, side pockets, thread loops, and belt. B and C have a back vent, are lined and detachable. Collar D has elastic hoops. So it looks like it, um, there might be like some buttons along the collar and that's what it attaches to. What is this? Is that the collar? Okay, <laughs> that's an interesting looking picture. All right, yeah. It's like a long extended blazer without a ton of that shaping that blazers 
can have. I don't know. It's like, it's okay to me. I don't love the longer length. I prefer this one. Um, I'd like to know more about how this attaches though, because that could be really cool. At least to learn how to do that and apply it to a coat body that you really love. Wool blends, wool flannel, tweeds, brocades, faux fur, and lining fabrics. Buttons, yeah. So it looks like there's going to be like buttons around the collar somehow, somewhere. And then on this fur piece, there's um, elastic loops. And those two things hook into each other somehow. Uh, okay, shoulder pads, sleeve heads. So... They do a good job of building, you know, tailoring the shoulders of the jacket really well, even though there's not a lot of design style lines in the bottom half, you know? All right, and then here's your fabric requirements. Yeah, the long one needs a lot of fabric. Yep. And then no helpful finished garment measurements. Okay. Here is a little bodycon dress, 7999. Close fitting pullover dresses have sleeve variations and stitched hem. A has a collar, B has a neckband and side slit, and C has a collar and back slit. Well, she looks like a million bucks. <laughs> Here's your little turtleneck. I'm assuming that's the collar or neckband. I don't know the difference. Little sweater knit there. Oh, this must be the neckband. There's gotta be two collars. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so B, neckband and side slit. A has a collar and is shorter, and then C has the same collar and a back slit instead of a side slit. I wish we could see that. There's your side slit, and then there's your back slit. Okay, two-way stretch, 50% stretch. That's a lot, not a lot, like just on the scale of stretch, 50% requirement is more than not. <laughs> Rib knit, jersey, interlock, velvet knits. And then the alphanumeric sizing, uh, sizing you need seam binding. Uh, Quite a bit of fabric, considering it's so form-fitting. All right, there you go. Pretty straightforward, though. I mean, it's not that nothing that spectacular about it. So, oh my. Okay, seven nine nine five. Wow, loose fitting dresses have collar and sleeve variations. C has a contrast collar, ruffles, and a flounce. Okay, let me start by saying, <laughs> let me start by saying, I don't hate the design. This fabric is bonkers. Like I get that they were going for like holiday, New Year's, party dress. Oh God, it's just a lot. It's a lot. Okay. Then we have like the springtime version, I guess. Daytime version at the very least with a little halter top, halter um, neckline and a couple flounces. No sleeves, obviously. Here's one. This is interesting with a little slit opening here. One solid color though. I mean, it's cool. Probably too cool for me especially in those fabrics. But I don't, I, I truly, truly, I don't hate it. <laughs> you just got to get past the fabrics. Okay, so here's the cute little daytime, springtime, summertime version. This one's pretty much year round, I feel like. Um, certainly could be cute right now in the weather we have now. And then here is the version with the everything. It has the collar, the sleeves, the flounces on the sleeves, the flounces on the dress. Like it's, it's everywhere. It's got everything. So, but these two versions are very everyday appropriate. Even this version 
out of one of these fabrics would have been really, really cool. I just think it's all of the stuff plus all of the fabric and it's like, oh, I don't know what to look at. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Um, but it is really cool. It's got a definite little 80s vibe to it. I'm here for that. So. <clears throat> Fabrics, crepe, Georgette, crepe de chine, charmeuse. I mean, yes, those would all work. This has got to be some version of like lame or something too. So you're looking for pretty drapey fabrics. All right, no notions. So you just pull it on over your head, I guess. So what does the back look like then? How, how does that happen? It ties in the front? No, that makes no sense. It can't not have notions. How do you get in this thing? That's something's not right about that. Okay, uh, alphanumeric sizing. And then here's all your fabric requirements. Look, bust line and hip line measurements. That's nice. This bust line's really all that matters in a dress like this because it's so loose fitting. Um, but nice to see it here. Cool. I hope some people are inspired to make that and make some really fun versions. Okay, this is 8021 Mrs. Dress and Belt. Look at this cute little sequin number. Okay, little wrap dress with a tie belt, elasticized sleeve. And like I said, they did it in this stunning all over sequin fabric. Here's another sequin knee version. Oh, no sleeves on that one. Okay. And then, oh, that's pretty. No belt. Not entirely sure how it stays closed. All right, there she is off to her party. Super cute. This is fun, right? I could totally see this exact version ready to wear, um, but costing like 500 or more dollars. Loose fitting, line dresses have two, in two links have wrap front with snap closures and side seam pockets. I mean, do you really need side seam pockets in a dress like this? A is sleeveless, A and B have belt with thread loops, B and C have long sleeves with elastic casing at lower edges, C has contrast left front. Yeah, I just don't know how flattering C would be if you need to define a waist. This is not going to do that for you. Um, but the drawing looks cool. These versions, you can, you know, obviously pull it in some. And this is, this is silly. Skip those pockets. You don't need pockets on a dress like this. You're bringing a little evening bag. Like, you're not here to put your hands in your pockets. <laughs> That's silly. Okay, fabric, sequin, novelty fabrics, crepes, velvets. Oh, velvet would be really pretty. And then your lining fabrics. I don't know what this means. Pieces 1995F, I don't know what that means at all. Two pair snaps and then elastic. Alphanumeric sizing again, which is interesting. And then I mean, not a ton of fabric, especially given that it's a sequin fabric. Um, those can sometimes be a little bit expensive. And then finished bust and hip measurement. Very roomy bust. Well, very roomy everywhere. There are a lot of people who this is going to be too big for. That's interesting. Well, yeah, it is pretty roomy. So yeah, you really need that belt because this is going to be like a sack on most people. Hmm. Okay. Next up, Nicole Miller. Ooh la la. Okay. Very Nicole Miller, right? 
close fitting dress has foundation with boning, invisible zipper, inside elastic belt with bra extender and a bra V separator, which is what this is. So this is a dress that you will learn something on. So we've got all the boning in here. We've got almost like a waist stay type of deal. We've got the bra V separator, which is kind of like underwire, but in this little shape here. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on inside this guy, which is nice because that means it's going to produce a really beautiful, well-made dress in the end. I like that. That excites me. And the design of it, I like too. I don't typically wear sleeveless, off-the-shoulder type of things. Just, I don't love being that exposed personally, but like I said, you'll learn a lot from making this, that's for sure. I want to know more about this hemline. Yeah, it's just like kind of asymmetrical. I don't even know if that's that's not right. It's just longer in the middle, which is interesting. You've got true um, cuffs. You've got pretty shaping here with this seam. Center back zip. Yeah, most of the work is happening here, though. That would be fun to make. Shearsa. I've never seen that before. Georgette, chiffon, burnout velvet, lining fabrics, and then you need a, a trico for your foundation, which is what the boning and everything is sewn to. So you're basically kind of like making a corset, and then you're building the dress around that. So yeah, here's all of the... All of the notions that you need. And then here's your sizing. Finished bust, finished hip. Thank you very much. Yeah. This is more like what I'm used to with my fit and flare dresses. I really appreciate that they didn't give us a simple design. I think that's one thing we have all been constantly saying almost this whole year about the big four is that everything was just too basic too much for the beginner sewer and like the rest of us are just like bored um great for those of you that are just getting into sewing but for the rest of us like you know come on give us something so I really appreciate that they chose a design that is this you know so much goes into making it all right Cute little learn to sew for fun. I have a special affinity for the learn to sew for funds now that I've done the two sew alongs. Um, I really, really do appreciate them for what they are. And I love both of the dresses that I made. So there's something to say for that. But this is a lined dress, which is neither, yeah, neither of the um, ones we've done so far have been lined um, with a fitted bodice, center back invisible zipper, neither what we've done has had any zippers either and skirt variations sleeveless and then there's a three-quarter sleeve with a flounce and then c has a lace overlay so this is actually a nice progression from the other two dresses that we've sewn together seeing as this one is lined and um has an invisible zipper so the first dress had like no sleeves, no closures, not fitted anywhere. The second one was fitted in the bodice, made from a knit, had sleeves. Now this one is woven, fitted, lined, and has a closure. So you can see the progression there. Really cute, kind of basic skater design. You can make this out of a gajillion different fabrics and it'll look stunning in all of them. Here is the version she has on, but with a wider, fuller skirt. Cute. I even like this little trumpet skirt, which totally isn't like me, but I do like this one. So learn to sew a line dress, learn to sew with lace, learn to insert an invisible zipper. That's really cool. That's really great. You would have a really, really nice garment at the end. Oh, it even has little shoulder darts. That's nice. You don't see that very often. But it's like once you learn to make one dart, just make all the other darts. Um, 
so there's that the flounce would be interesting for you guys and then here's the lace version that's fun these are always so inspiring to me even though they're a little bit basic i don't know they're still fun to sew learn to sew for fun okay oh yardage crepes cotton blends satin wool blends you can also do the lace and lining but like i said i mean you could pretty much pick any fabric out of your stash and make one of these versions. Not all of them are gonna be suitable for a skirt like this and not all of them are suitable for a skirt like that, but um, you'd be able to pick one of these designs and have a stunning little dress. So you need your zipper and a hook and eye, and then the sizing is eight to 16 and then 18 to 24, so a bit of an extended size range on this. You need just a little bit of fabric, probably two yards for everybody. You know how you can squeeze out. Um, there's always, I feel like a little bit extra. This one, yeah, goes closer to three for B because as a skirt, yeah, the wider the skirt, the obviously the more fabric you will need. And then, yeah, so then here's your finished bust and your finished hip for the fitted version and then the fuller skirt. This is great. Three patterns in a row with those finished garment measurements. Thank you. I mean, the hip would be nice. I mean, the waist would be nice too, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> okay, fun. That one's cute. All right, here. Oh, here's another learn to sew for fun. Look how cute this one is. Okay, close fitting through bust with elasticized neckline and sleeve variations. Okay, an elasticized neckline? I don't know what they mean about that, but this design is so cute. Very 90s, you know? Remember all those, like, um, Courtney Love dresses? <laughs> oh, there it is with a sleeve. And that looks more like top stitching than elastic to me. Is that an elastic? I don't That might not be right. Learn to sew with velvet knits, a.k.a. velour. Learn to insert elastic at neck. I don't even know what that means. Elastic at neckline. Learn to sew a narrow hem. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're making it seem like there's elastic here. What's the point of that? Just to keep it really close to your body? Man, all right. So 35% stretch. Velvet knits, cotton knits, interlock. Okay, still pull on. So there's teaching you about velvet and elastic and a narrow hem, which you guys already know the narrow hem if you've done my sew alongs. Okay, six to 14 and then 14 to 22. Yeah, you barely need two yards of fabric for any of the views. And then just the width and length measurements. Yeah, I don't know so much about, I mean, the design's really cute, but I don't get the elastic at the neckline at all. You can't even see it in there. What's the point? I mean, it's not like creating any gathers or ruching or anything. You know what else I want to see? Yeah, let's look at a view without her arm up. I mean, I don't know, just fits well. Oh, look at her little tattoos. Um... I wonder if those are meant to be like cross stitches. That would be so interesting if she was a maker. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand that, but, but I don't hate it. And it's a super cute velvet dress for sure. Okay, next up, we've got this skirt. Mrs. Skirts, very loose fitting, eight gore skirt has raised waistline, center back zipper, and stitched hem. A has contrast panels, and C has a front bow and knot. So here's what gores are. They're basically these long panels, narrow at the top, and then get wider at the bottom to create this humongous flare. Here's another version. I think that must be longer, maybe. And then here's this wrappy sashy thing I don't know about that and I love a bow 
And then there's the invisible zipper. It goes a little too low, in my opinion. Okay, there you have it. So you can either do the contrast. I think this is just all one. And then maybe this is... What? Oh, they're all the same length? Oh, okay, they're all the same length. This one just has the bow, and this one doesn't. Cotton blends, faux leather, oh, that's a lot of skirt for faux leather. Wool blends, denim, I think Ankara would be really pretty. Uh, one zipper, hook and eye, 6 to 14, and then 14 to 22 on the sizing. And then, yeah, you need a little more than two yards, almost three, if you want to do that belt thing. So that's a lot. It's a lot of fabric. But you could make a really beautiful version for sure. Especially they're going for like a holiday party look thing here. Um, and I'm glad that they did not make the skirt in black. Because that's probably instinctually what they wanted to do. But you just can't. Black just does not photograph very well. Um, so I'm glad that they didn't do that. But it, and imagine this in black with the top. I think you can picture like a really cute holiday skirt. The length too. Okay, now we've got a jumpsuit that I'm pretty sure is knit. Yeah, very loose fitting, pull on romper and jumpsuit, have elastic waist, neckline, side pockets, and sleeve variations. A has narrow hems, B has stitched hems, and C has cuffs. Okay. Again, remember how I just said black is hard to photograph? This is this is an example. So this is the elastic neckline that I was picturing whenever the Learn to Sew for Fun one mentioned that, um, where it like actually pulls up into a gather, but um, it looks like a little raglan sleeve situation, elasticized waist, uh, my favorite kind of pocket, the scoopy pocket, and then stitched hem. Here is shorts and off the shoulder, which all of these might do that if you just pull this down. If you just pull that down, they might all be this. I don't think this is a separate pattern piece or anything like that. Oh, look, one on, one off. So there, I mean, she looks, this is a very well styled outfit. They're really making this work. Um, there could be a lot of ways to style this where she'd look a hot mess. So I appreciate the, the effort on the styling. Here is like a casual version, which looks a little bit more like I wore my pajamas to the grocery store. Um, but this looks great, like very intentional. Yep, so there you have it. Hmm, I really want to like this. I want this to work. I think it comes down to fabrication 1000%. Not just like the type of fabric, but your print and your intention behind where you're going to wear it. Do you want it for daytime? Do you want it for nighttime? And then picking a fabric that works for that. So here are our line drawings. And yardage, 35% stretch, jersey, cotton knits, interlock. Yeah, they didn't mention velour, but that's what she's wearing. Um, then you need a ton of elastic for your neckline, your waistline, your wrists. And then here's the fabric requirements and alphanumeric sizing. All right, cute concept for sure. All right, now we've got a top. Loose fitting pullover top has drop shoulder, neckline and sleeve variations, curved hem. So this is a lot of what we've already seen. More drop shoulders, more, you know, rag, not raglan, but dolman sleeves. 
Wow. Hmm. <laughs> well, I wish she weren't covering. Well, here she's not covering. Yeah. No. It almost looks too small for her, am I right? Like, right here, it was a little tight. Especially for a loose fitting, right? I mean, it's definitely loose fitting up here. I don't know, maybe they were trying too hard on the starry evening, you know. I'm going to a party too, but <laughs> my party, you can wear sneakers. You know, it feels a little bit like, what? But looking at the design itself, I'm also not super impressed. It's just a little bat wing top, which we've seen a thousand times this year. Moderate stretch knits, jersey, cotton knits, and interlock, alphanumeric sizing, no notions. And yeah, you need kind of a lot of fabric just for a top, which is why I think I don't like, I don't make tops a lot. Because I'm like, if I need this much fabric for a top, then I just want to make a dress. <laughs> Now I don't have to think about pants or what I'm going to wear it with or anything. All right, 8025 is, wow, a velvet uh, color block. That's fun. Close fitting pullover tops have wrap front with left side gathers, which y'all know I love. The side gathers creates a beautiful little like camouflage for any tummy issues you might be having. Sleeve variations and narrow hems. C has contrast left front and left sleeve. Okay. It's a little like very close to gymnast, uh, very close to a figure skater. This version's really sweet. I like that a lot. Yep, that looks good. Well, I mean, that's cute with the shoes. Now you're changing my mind. It's cute. I like this one a lot. I like, I don't know that I would make it out of the velvet, but I don't hate the color blocking and the design is really cute in short sleeve or long sleeve. All right. So it's, yeah, it's for knits. So that would be, you know, velour, jersey, cotton knits, interlock, the double brush poly that we all probably used for the last learn to sew for fun, sew along, no notions, alphanumeric sizing, And then, well, golly gee, you need a whole yard of fabric just for the sleeve and this little panel, but yeah, it wraps under. So yeah, okay, I get it. It makes sense. It takes a lot more fabric to do color blocking by almost a whole other yard. And then your finished bust measurements. Appreciate that. All right. Cute. Next up, is this it? Yep, we've got four more. That's a cute fabric. Okay, we're not buying the fabric, we're buying the pattern. So, very loose fitting, pullover tops have front and back yokes, gathers, and two piece sleeves with link variations. A and B have ruffles and sleeves with bias tape casing and elastic. B has contrast sleeve and side panels. C has gathered and elasticized sleeves. Okay. So it looks like this must be the, what are they talking, gathers? Is that what they're calling them? Ruffles? Ruffles, gathers, uh, out of self fabric, I'm guessing, too? Okay, that version's kind of fun. I don't, I mean, this is using, I think, a brocade or a jacquard or something like that. And so all these little ruffles are very stiff. This to me feels lightweight, drapey. Here it is without any frills. 
I like this little gather here. That's pretty gathered on the sleeve cap as well. Yeah, this is a really cute top. This, I don't get this version. I don't get the styling here. I don't get any of what's happening. It, it almost is like we have this scrap fabric. Let's just make it out of that. You know what I mean? It feels like an odd choice. Unless, again, they were really pushing for the holiday thing and wanted something shiny and kind of maybe going for a goldish look. I don't know. Yeah, the drawings really, this is one of the few times where I feel like the drawings don't do it justice. It actually looks better um, made up than it does in the drawing. But this is like the mixed prints, exactly what I did for the Stylemaker Fabrics tour. Um, so you could definitely grab some of those rayons that I used for that um, and use them here. I wonder if I have enough scraps. I do have quite a bit. Hmm, that's got my mind going. <laughs> okay, um, cotton blend, chali, lawn, crepe de chine. And then you need bias tape, elastic, and seam binding. A and B. Ruffles and sleeves with bias tape casing. Sleeve with bias tape. Oh, on the inside. That's what your elastic runs through bias tape. Okay, okay, okay. I get it now. All right. And then here's your fabric requirements. Okay. And then finished bust line. Very roomy all around. So I'm not sure that those finished measurements make a ton of difference but it's cute I like this one all right now we've got a button front shirt with uh, little drawstringy things close fitting top princess seams and two links have collar collar band front yoke two piece pleated sleeve Two-piece pleated sleeves? Uh, front, did I read that? Front band, snap closures, top stitching details. A has contrast sections and draw, grommets with drawstrings. And B has casings and drawstrings. Okay, let's look at this a little bit closer. Two-piece pleated sleeve. I'm having a hard time understanding what that means. I know what a two-piece sleeve is. What's, where is it pleated? Okay. What do we think about this? Dangly things from your butt and your hips. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool-ish. Mm -hmm. I could probably go either way with those. Maybe I wish that this part weren't so long. See how it's like they had to unbutton it because it was pulling it tight? So maybe if the whole shirt was shorter and then you did this so that these pulled up to your high hip and not your low hip, maybe I would like that better. Oh, look, they didn't even show the back of that one. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, so there's also this version that has this like lattice work. I still don't know what a two-piece pleated sleeve is. No idea, unless they're referring to this pleat, but that has more to do with the cuff. So... And then here's a regular version. All right. Yeah, it's an interesting take on kind of a standard design. You know, if someone were tasked with a challenge of, hey, take a traditional button down and make it more modern, this would be a good way to do that. Okay. Cotton blends, chambray, gingham, flannel, obviously, shirting, all of that. 10 grommets, that's for the lace-up thing, 15 four-part metal snaps instead of buttons, and then um, B and C have one extra snap. 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. 
And then here's your fabric requirements. Oh, this takes about a whole half a yard more. B does. Which one's B? The one she's wearing? Yeah. I guess for these things? Mm. And then your finished bust line and length measurements. Very good. Now we've got, oh, after posting my sewing fail on Monday, we've got another similar type of dress, right? Where it's made from like a stable knit, should be close fitting to the body and has an interesting neckline. This is a Nancy Zeman pattern. Close fitting dress has princess seams with front hidden pockets and stitched hems. I would wanna know, is the pocket, like can your hand go straight through? Is the pocket bag a rectangle? If so, two thumbs up. If not, and these are like separate pocket bags, hard pass. Okay, collar with casings, elastic cord and stopper, and then B has a hood. So this is very, um, this one's a lot more athletic feeling to me than the one I was trying to make, but both similar ideas. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to Monday's video. I think the captions or the title something like, is this a sewing fail? So yeah, she's running around doing some things, trying to be comfortable and warm. But she has a very A-line skirt. Whoa, that's a whole different look without the leggings. A little short. All right. So athletic knits, interlock, cotton knit, and ponty. Yeah, I have a feeling that both of these are ponty. And I'm not totally sure about that as a choice, but I can't totally think of anything else that would have been better. I guess if you're going with the, you know, French terry or sweatshirt fleece or something like that, maybe. And Ponty doesn't have 35% stretch cross green, FYI. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, okay, interfacing, elastic cord and drawstring stopper, alphanumeric sizing. Ah, oh, yeah, two and a half yards of fabric. And then finished garment measurements. Okay. This one I feel like where the, remember I told you guys the other one I had to like take in six inches on the waist and you guys all thought that it was still too big. Um, this one would be closer because I would fall, I would grade between a medium and a large here. Um, I think if my memory serves me right on my, hip measurement. Um, so I feel like on that other one, I was trying to grade between like three or four sizes, which is probably where I went wrong. So that's fun. Cute and fun. All right. Finally, we've got a little jacket. They're going for the teddy bear fur, teddy bear, shirling, whatever it is. Line jacket has yoke details, elasticized lower edge and sleeves and center front exposed zipper, contrast yoke, collar and aligned hood are your options. Yeah, this is 80s with this V. Doesn't, um, oh shoot, who's the indie pattern company that starts with P? I want to say paprika, but I know that's not right. <laughs> Paper or something maybe. <laughs> Gosh, my memory is just really weird sometimes. Anyways, don't they have like a sweatshirt or something like this? Well, that's just definitely trying to just be the 80s now. Yep, and then this very trendy fabric. 
this I can't tell is that sewn in like that or is that how the fabric came I think it's sewn on like that that's kind of cool yeah there she is but um yeah you get some windbreaker material you're like ready for the 80s party like in no time fleece cuddle fleece velour interlock uh, okay lining lining oh it's lined that's weird. I don't need it to be lined. Not with these fabrics. Not when you can just serge all the insides. Hmm. All right. Um, elastic, separating zipper, zipper top stops. What are zipper top stops? I don't even know. Alphanumeric sizing. And then here's your fabric requirements. Finish bust and hip. So depending on how loose fitting you wanted it to be. All right, there we have it. That is gonna get us through the McCall's Winter Holiday 2019. I quite enjoyed this. What did you guys think? Um, let me see if I can pull out some of the ones that I loved. This one, first of all, um, I was already contemplating making that sequin jumpsuit from Simplicities, but this would give that a run for its money for sure. This Learn to Sew for Fun, again, warms my heart. Some other version of this is great. This is nice for those of you who are looking for an actual project. Cute little design here. Uh, this one again has potential. This one could make a really great holiday. Yeah, I liked that top. This one I think was the only one where I was like, mm, I don't think so. This sort of, but I did love this one too, just not that particular version. So yeah, there are a lot of really great things in the collection um, this season. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Um, especially those of you that have been commenting on how basic everything has been. I feel like that's one thing that we might not be able to say about this one. I don't feel like this is super basic. I really feel like there are some interesting design uh, things going on here with this collection. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I will see you all back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.